here's a hundred thousand dollar question you may have well joe what's the big deal why do you have to put a cut in box in there if you have an existing condition like that why not just put a pancake box right on that put your wires inside the pancake box come out of your pancake box take your pancake box like this half inch thick screw that right onto the wall then reattach it to your light fixture and usually most light fixtures have a concave area like this that would go over that and you would probably be okay why on earth can you not do that here well here's the thing we're taking that off that light fixture off and we're putting this in its place and this is a wall sconce that kind of nice that's going to set up there and then there's going to be a light bulb attached to it and then the light's going to shine out of that okay and so when we look at the back of this we can see this particular sconce has a little area for the bulb so I had to go to the hardware store and I found this here and I found this little adapter okay so I'm gonna put that in like that screw this in like this and then the light bulb has to be screwed into that okay so once I get it in there it's gonna be like that and then I'm gonna to have to have little piece of cord and I've got it and I've got all the wires in there and stuff now that is going to be exposed that's why I have it in the rubber sheathing that's why I chose to get something like this then I have to attach it onto there the silver and there's a white and a black in there and a green wire in there green is for ground the white is for the neutral and the white will go on the silver screw and the black We'll go on the gold screw and so see that has to come out of the wall and this little bit of cord will be extended out of the wall that's why i want to get the wire connection with the wire nuts and stuff inside the actual wall because i don't i can't you can see the existing light fixture has that has that area here where these wires were you see and that was all shoved into the back like that that's why they had plenty of room we don't have that here do we so that's why it's got to go into a box and like i said i pulled this apart the very first time i was very surprised to see that there was no exterior uh there was no junction box light fixture box you know the rough wired in box inside the wall usually you'll you'd see a box kind of like this but it would be metal okay but in this case i didn't know at this i didn't know when i went to the store what kind to get so that's why i got a plastic cutting box and i got this pancake box it looks like we may end up having to use the pancake box up here because it looks like there's a two by four back in there horizontal that comes over to this vertical two by four it probably goes over here and then the wire they ran from the, from up here they drilled a hole inside the wall come down they ran it here and they they must have run out of boxes and they put a staple in this two by four from the top down to keep this secure as secure as they could okay and then they just ran it on there I, i'm not sure what, why they did that and whether why the inspector were to let them do that maybe back in the 70s it was okay to do but i you know i just don't think so i think this was jerry rigged in later on down the road or maybe the inspector uh wasn't here that day when it got signed off who knows but in any case that's why i'm having to drill that out cut that out carefully and see ultimately which box to use see if I use that cut-in box I would have to take that 2x4 out of there or drill it in far enough we'll see first things first I'm gonna keep gouging away with my drill a little bit now see I got plenty of room I've got a little jigsaw set up here and it's got a really small little scrolling blade I can use that 
and if, and if I have to, I might use one of these blades here. See, I could use this blade as well. Always have some extra blades in case you break one off. See, these don't even have tips on them for some reason. I'm not sure why that was, unless they already broke off. But I could use this without the without a tip. No need for a tip. Okay. I'll keep going at it. Remember I said I would take that and then screw that in and then that's gonna that's gonna hold in there. I got this adapter for a reason. I may use it, I may not use it. I think I'm still gonna use it. I'm not quite sure yet though. But see this, I forgot to tell you, this unscrews. Okay. Like that. So what I could do is hold that in there like that and then put that in. Okay. Like that. Now I can screw the light bulb from there down. And that's probably what I'm going to do. But if I wanted the light bulb extended down further, I could screw this in there and do that. Okay. So go to, the, go to your local hardware store and see what type of options you have. Ask for the ground, ask for the ground wire. You may say, how are you going to hook up the ground, Joe? Because there's only two screws up here, a silver screw and a gold screw. Gold screw for black, silver screw for white. I got some little ground clips. I can take the ground wire, hook it in there, and I can push it right down on that and that will ground that if I need to do that. Some light fixtures don't have a ground wire. Some others do. So sometimes you just have to do what you gotta do. If you got questions you can always go to your local hardware store, tell them about your project and how, what, what you're trying to do, and see what they have to say about it. Wow, I may have to spray some WD-40 on that. It's been sitting for a little bit, so I can make sure I don't have an issue with the threads going up in there later. Okay, back to my project. I go. Good golly, Miss Molly. Yeah, the things that happen. You see here, this is a one by four that goes up. There was a hole drilled here and the wire went through that. And there's a gap between this and the back side of the 5 8 siding. And so see, I could take that out. I could cut that out with a Sawzall or something. But if I did, my cut-in box is not gonna fit because see the cut-in, is designed to fit behind just the siding, not behind the siding, plus a half inch, plus a one by four. I mean, I, I have to measure this exactly, cut that back or something, and fit that in there because see, see where that is? If I were to put that in there, I don't have enough room. If this was up higher, I could have pushed that in. And so that's not gonna work. So I'm glad I had my pancake box because I made the pancake box exactly tight in there and it's a friction fit. I put I put some screws in there and I allowed a long half inch thickness. So when I push this in, this is gonna go up there snug. I'm gonna put the wire through there and I'm gonna take these holes that were already in this box and I'm gonna put a little screw up in into here and right to there. What I could also do is I could drill a hole up here, let's say, not right in the middle because, well, I just have to see where this is going to go. I think it was going to go straight across that way. And so I could drill a hole right through that and I could put another screw right there. Okay, then I'll have 
the wire through that. So see, I'll put this up, up here like that. You see what I mean? Like that. And I might, it's a friction fit right now. I can line that up and I can squeeze some screws in there and I might drill a hole through that. Now see that there, some people may say, hey Joe, you're not supposed to do that. This wire is too close to that. Well, that's new construction, yes, but if you want, you could take a Romex connector and that's a little thing that puts on here and it clamps on the back side. Well, you can't get to the back side, so you'd have to put the Romex connector in backwards, have it on the inside, screw everything tight on the, on the inside of the box. Or you could take something, let's see here, you could take something like this. Okay, and that, that squeezes the wire in there. So see, I could put it in upside down and push it in right there, then take the wire, push it in through there, and then as it comes out, it's gonna be tight. You see what I mean? I, I don't want to push it in that way because the wire is coming from the back side. See, these things are designed to, to, to expand. See how I push my finger through there? That's how the wire is going to go. Right in through there once you snap that in this. So you could do that. And then push the wire through there and suck it up there tight. So a couple of different things you can do. Could you leave that there? Yeah, you could probably leave that there. If an inspector were to see this, of course he would say, no, you can't do that. But if you can see this is all existing, once I put that wire through there, the wire is never gonna go anywhere. But see right now, it's, it's loose. And when it came through this, it was loose too. There was no staple on it because this is just a one by four. See, I can reach my hand there. And it goes from here up like this, all the way across. I don't know how, why they would do such a thing. And, uh, you may have wondered how on earth did I cut this hole so nice because this was in the way my jigsaw blade was too long it kept chattering in here and kept popping out how did I cut that have any idea how I did that well if you were to say that Joe probably got a little tricky here and he were to use something like this little drill bit right here you would be right. I drilled it, drilled it, drilled it, drilled it, and then used that and use it as a cutting tool. Yeah, that's how I did it from this point over to this point. And I was lucky too. You see this right here? Look at that. I gouged that because the wire was coming through there and then it was loop-de-looped -loop up through there so when I was hitting this I hit the wire fortunately for me it kind of looped up and around I was able to pull that out this had a little bit of a slop to it so see I've got all this room before I can cut that out for fortunately for me I had enough room for that okay so that's how I'm gonna do that Get ready for installing that cut-in box. And I'm going to take a drill bit, I guess. I'm going to do another hole right there to get my screw through there. And I'm using some screws. I always, I always have stuff like this. These, these are coarse sheetrock screws, and these happen to be galvanized. See, galvanized deck. These are called galvanized deck six by inch and five eighths. And I had some two inch ones too. I work on exterior. I like to use these because then they don't rust out. Okay, so that's how I'm gonna attach that. And, and my backing screws that I use, of course, yes. I use the galvanized screws too, see, like that. And I just measured the box. It was, it was a little bit less than a half inch and I just took a plate here. I held that across there and then I measured the screw from there over and then if it's you know you eyeball it and if you have to you screw this screw in or out loosen it up and 
those are my shims. That's all I'm gonna use because I was fortunate enough, I cut the box, I cut the box nice and tight in there. And even if it was a little bit sloppy, these screws up here are gonna hold the whole box. And anyways, okay, get ready for my next step.